This is the Play Your Position podcast, where we huddle up, call the plays, and inspire you to run your ball into the end zone. Are you ready to score more game-winning touchdowns in your life, business, and career? Then listen up, because it's game time, baby. Now, here's your host, Mary Lou Kayser. Hey, Team PYP, Mary Lou Kayser here. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Play Your Position podcast. Today, I am running an audible here at PYP, and it's one I've been thinking about for a little while, ever since I heard about what I'm going to share with you today on a podcast that I listen to regularly. And I'm going to walk you through an exercise that was tremendously helpful for me in light of a recent big life event that I experienced. And no, I'm not talking about my dad dying. That was actually, we're going on 18 months now since I lost my dad. That in and in and of itself was a big life event. But I'm talking about having to make the hard decision to move from where I was living in the Pacific Northwest to where I'm living now on the East Coast, outside of New York City, to be somewhat exact, um, I needed to close that loop in my life and getting the things that I had left behind unknowing what I was about to enter in my life back in uh, July of 2021, it helped close out an energy leak that I could tell was affecting me even though it wasn't actively bothering me from day to day, it was more of that sub, you know, that, that current that runs a little bit lower than our active day to day. And, uh, I just went through that. Uh, my stuff is actually en route on a large moving truck as I record this. And the lesson that I'm, I'm going to walk you through today is one that just felt so in tune with where I am in my life. And I don't know where you are in your life. You may be in a really good space and this exercise may not, you may not feel a need for it right now. However, I think it's an exercise that's worthwhile doing no matter where you are in your life, because in all fairness, we're always in some state of agitation or another, where there's something that we're seeking, there's something that we're not quite satisfied with. And again, this exercise helped me gain some perspective that I I really needed to um, move through the process of grieving, leaving the Northwest and becoming a (laughs) semi-permanent resident of where I live now, which was never in my big picture right? This is, this is the interesting part of life is we can think that we've got everything mapped out. That's one of my key questions that I ask my guests regularly is tell us a story about a time when things did not go according to plan. You had all the X's and O's mapped out. The playbook was there. You studied the tape. You knew about your opponent and still you got out there on the field and nothing went right. You fumbled the ball, you threw a game losing interception, you got sacked, maybe had to sit the rest of the game out. You know, the question is what happened and then how did you recover? And recovery is the piece of the puzzle that needs sometimes the most attention. It's easy to get stuck in that place of wow, what just happened? Why did this just happen? I don't like what just happened. You know, the, the negative, right? To, to tap into that low vibration strand of energy that can just um, pull us down and keep us playing small. So the exercise I'm going to take you through is really very simple. And if you're listening to this while you're driving or you're multitasking, you may not be able to do it. So you may want to come back when you're in a place where you can sit down and be at a desk or a table because you're going to need a piece of paper or 
one of these blank artistic books, which I love, the hardbound. You can buy at Michael's. I think they're like 10 bucks each, usually on sale. And the for me, I like unlined pages. Um, some people like lined. It doesn't really matter. Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper or open up the, a journal. And the question that was posed, and I'm going to pose it to you, is when in your life do you remember the point where you were living your life based on your own decisions? In other words, what year, how old were you when you realized I'm really doing this on my own? For me, it was 1984 when I left my home and went to college. That was when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm doing this. I'm going to a place I don't know a single person. I am entering a new phase of my life I know nothing about. And every decision that I made had consequences. Not that they didn't before, but it was different because I didn't have my parents or my community that I'd grown up with nearby to to save me. If I made a blunder, if I made a wrong turn, I had to figure it out myself with the help of, of new people who again, I didn't know people from all over the place. And so whatever year that was for you, write that down and then map out the, you know, the subsequent years. And for each year between that time and now, I want you to think about major events in each year. Could be graduating from college, could be moving to a different city, getting married, getting divorced, having a child, having a second child, losing a parent, losing a sibling, anything. Getting your first big job with a a salary and health benefits, getting fired, enrolling in graduate school, dropping out of graduate school. It doesn't matter. Just each year, really take the time. And this is going to take you probably 20 to 30 minutes. But each year, identify one to three big events of that year where those events impacted your decision-making and they had significant consequences. And then once you have that done, sit back and ask yourself, what are some of the big themes that you notice about your life? Are there patterns to the way you've made decisions? Did things tend to happen to you from outside forces or were they more guided by your own internal compass? Maybe there was a blend of things. Obviously, when people die, that isn't, we don't cause that unless, you know, you're a psychopath, right? (laughs) Which uh, that doesn't apply here, but you know what I mean? It's like, you know, when my grandmother died in 1986, that was the loss of my first grandparent. And I was in Tacoma, Washington. She was outside of Boston. And I remember distinctly having conversations with my mom on the phone about whether or not I should come to the funeral. And my mom said to me, you know, your grandmother was such an advocate for education and she didn't like people making a fuss about her. And that influenced my decision not to go. And I'll tell you, for years, I really regretted not going because that loop never closed for me. And one thing I've learned as I've gotten older and experienced life is sometimes loops aren't going to be closed. However, we do have more control through the decisions that we make to make peace with those open ends. And in a strange way, me coming back to help with my mom, making the conscious decision to have my life start over from here has closed a lot of little loops that were hanging around and has given me a sense of freedom that I haven't felt in a long time. And that's certainly one of the themes. I'll share with you some of the themes 
from doing this exercise. One of them is I am freedom seeking. I have been since I can remember. Independence and freedom are two values that are very, very important to me. But I also understand now, actually I have for quite a while, probably the last 10 years, that in order to experience freedom and independence, you also have to have responsibility and boundaries because they, the true, the sweet spot is between the tension or is the tension between the two parallels, right? The two, the dualities. It's that, that third space that's created between two opposing forces. That's the sweet spot we're always after. And I don't know what your values are. I don't know what kinds of themes you're going to come up with when you really see in front of you that timeline. But freedom and independence were one. And then the other thing is so crazy. And I haven't really talked much about my latest book here um, on the on the podcast, um, partly because I'm getting ready to relaunch it in a much bigger way. I did a soft launch last October. Some of you listening um, have read the book, have bought the book, have supported me in this journey, and I appreciate you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate my readers and the feedback that I've received so far. But March 20th, which is uh, the first day of spring this year, I'm it'll be officially relaunched. It'll be available in hardback as well as soft cover paperback and also um, an ebook, and it will be available on Audible later this spring. So I'm really excited about it because this is my life's work, my podcast, my writing, um, the client work I do with helping people communicate more effectively, all part of what I do. And um, as I looked at this timeline, I realized that one of my themes is actually the title of my book. The title of my book is The Far Unlit Unknown. And ever since I chose to leave the comfort and safety and familiarity of my childhood home, I stepped into the far and lit unknown. And I've been doing that consistently over the years. Again and again and again, I see those places where I just stepped out into it, not knowing. You know, in 1986, I went to Alaska for the first time to become a rafting guide of all things. I had no idea what that would be like. I just knew in my my gut that I had to do that. And it was it was a phenomenal experience. I would not have my children had I not done that because I met their dad, not that first summer, but the following summer. I would not have settled in the Pacific Northwest and and had an amazing teaching career. I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be sitting in front of the microphone today talking to you about my crazy timeline had I not stepped into the far and lit unknown. And that is a theme that I am now so aware of in my life and and, and building out some programs around teaching people what that means, because I have seen too many times people who stop themselves, people who allow their fears and their uncertainties and their desire for comfort over adventure to steal from them the fullness that life can offer. So this exercise is going to reveal for you some things about your life that perhaps you have a sense of now, but it will clarify for you where you've been, where you are now, and where you might go next. You know, you're going to probably be stepping into the far unlit unknown. So stay tuned for that. I'm super, super excited. And I will make an announcement in a future episode about my book. If you follow me on the socials, LinkedIn and Instagram, Keep an eye out for that. Um, it will be available everywhere books are sold. And that story of, of the soft launch versus the big launch is something I'll, I'll share in a future episode. But for now, take the time, sit down, think about your life. Find that one point in your life when for the first time you were truly making decisions for yourself And all the consequences of those decisions were ones you had to face. There was no safety net. There were no parents. There was nobody there coming to rescue you. And then go from there 
highlight the big events of each year, and then reflect, do some journaling about the themes, the patterns that you notice, because they will inform you about how amazing your life has already been. And they will inform you about how much more amazing your life can be. And I want to leave you today with a quote from Steve Jobs. This is one of his most famous quotes. He said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life. So team, connect those dots, invest in yourself, invest in some time to really reflect on where you've been and the map that lies ahead for you. Wow. It's just so incredible. It's so incredible. You are incredible. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Play Your Position podcast. I love bringing you this content and thank you for your continued support. This is Mary Lou Kayser. Remember, it's always a great day to get out there and play your position. We'll see you next time. Here at the Play Your Position podcast, we believe that the road to self-mastery and a life well-lived starts with answering the call to leadership. That's when the fun really begins. Send this episode to any friends who might need to hear the inspiration and ideas you heard today. And feel free to rate and review us on your favorite podcast platform. 